8.7 million spaces we all fight to survive You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive My atmosphere is 78% nitrogen Another 21% of it is oxygen Another small percentage is of other elements Without my atmosphere around you would be frozen I take 365 Earth days to orbit the sun 24 hours makes one day that's just one time that I'm spun You won't fly off into space, gravity's pulling you down As fast as 9.8 meters a second towards the ground I am the Earth, the only planet with organic with 8.7 million species we all fight to survive You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive There are 12 different types of climates that exist on me Moderate, polar, dry, and tropical are four groups you see Then there is continental, it is the fifth category One climate in Earth has a second moon, it's me, provisionally designated, 2016 HO3, Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016, by Pan Stars. Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me Even though it is extremely hard to say I am very small compared to Earth's moon Measuring 164 feet across I'm tiny, it's true I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory Never closer than 40 to 100 times The 239,000 mile distance of your moon you see I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye Like other asteroids do I'm a quirky satellite and this is true Because of this researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as NEO, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3. Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may change with new facts that we can avoid we 
are the earth and the moon and you will learn really soon you can fit the planets in our solar system between us this is true we are the earth and the moon we meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us we will explain to you with a smile the average distance between the earth and the moon is 382,500 kilometers here's the other seven planets fit between us explaining who they are with some cool features I am Mercury, the first planet from the sun I'm the second hottest planet on my run My average diameter we do know is 4,879 kilometers Add these up as they are shown I am Venus, the hottest planet And the second from the sun I have an average diameter of 12,104 kilometers in the solar system. Hi, I am Mars, the fourth planet from the sun. You should know. I have an average diameter of 6,771 kilometers as I did show. My name is Jupiter, the largest planet in from the sun. I'm number my average diameter is 139,822 kilometers as I thrive. I'm the planet with the prominent rings, the sixth one called Saturn. My average diameter is 116,464 kilometers while I turn. I am Uranus. I am the seventh planet from the solar system's sun. I have an average diameter of 50,724 kilometers. I'm a frozen one. I am Neptune, the eighth and last planet in the solar system, as far as we know. I have an average diameter of 49,244 kilometers I'm blue as shown Our total planet diameter size When added up is 380,008 kilometers we share We still have 2,492 kilometers of space to spare We are the Earth and the Moon And you will learn It's in our solar system between us this is true we are the earth and the moon we meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us we will explain to you with a smile earth has a second moon it's me Visually designated 2016 HO3 Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016 by Pan Stars Asteroid Survey Telescope. You now see. This telescope is located on Haleakala in Hawaii, which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory. When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way, Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me, even though it is extremely hard to say i am very small compared to earth's moon measuring 164 feet across i'm tiny it's true i circle the earth in a repeating corkscrew like trajectory 
Never closer than 4,200 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do. I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi-satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3 Kamu Avnava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. Can grow. There is only one planet we know. 
know so far that is teeming with life, of course. That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away. There would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water is the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed So scientists would say This interstellar journey will show you The role gravity had played Almost five billion years ago There was only our sun Which was a newborn star Surrounded by dust was how it began Over time this dust began to slam into one another Due to gravity pulling it in As it smashed into each other The planet that we live on was made Space dust and rocks that formed Earth over millions of years into an orb, not a box. They say four and a half billion years ago, Earth was a fireball. That's right, with surface temperatures over 2,000 degrees and Fahrenheit. At this point, there was no air, just carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor, making it hot and toxic when the Earth began. Our boiling ball of liquid rock was slammed by a young planet. This planet's name was Thea. It was the size of Mars as you see it. The blast wave from this collision sent trillions of tons of debris, which over time was pulled back in to circle the Earth by gravity. This giant ring around the Earth was made of red hot dust and rock. Eventually formed our moon. We see today, I know it's a shock. Let's speed up millions of years to see how water formed. About 3.9 billion years ago, Earth was hit by a meteor. Inside each meteor, scientists think there were small crystals. Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells. Over the 20 million years that these meteors fell, pools of water started to form on the cooling crust. I do tell, no water on our Earth is billions of years old now, you see, and may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me. Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the Earth covered in water with tiny islands peeking out while the core remain much hotter. This hot core pushes molten rock up and out the Earth's new crust. When the lava cools, it forms a land we know as it builds and thrusts. Over time, these land masses start to collide and eventually form our continents we know today do still transform. Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed, so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played. How did Earth get its atmosphere we have today? There are three basic atmospheric hypotheses still used to this day. The first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas. These molecules move so fast they escape Earth's gravity into space at last. The second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam and carbon dioxide, hydrogen, sulfate, ammonia, and methane science agreed. The third and current atmosphere is made up of this. You will see plants take in carbon dioxide and give up oxygen to you and me. All animals take in oxygen and give up 
drop CO2. Also, volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels. We burn too many fossil fuels and have too many factory farms. All this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm. It's up to us to change the way we consume and create energy. If you start to make changes now, our planet will change. You will see. Please do your part to save the earth to improve your future now. We're capable of change. Go make us all proud. Here's a theory of how the earth was formed. So scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played. You're so smart and important. So believe in what you can do. Make a change and set the stage in earth's future for you. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. The lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust. They're part of the geosphere on earth which makes these plates adjust. Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock. There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates. Diverge, conversion, and transform. Now aren't those names just great? Divergent boundaries move away from each other and produce rip valleys. Most active between oceanic plates. Yes, the plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide. That's where you Systems. I 
Let's move on to the hydrosphere, it's a major one as well. It includes all forms of Earth's water now, isn't that swell? Oceans, lakes, and rivers, and our water vapor too, are what make up the hydrosphere, you learn something new. The biosphere's the final of the four major groups, including anything that's living that also includes you. Microbes, animals, plants, birds, and insects alike are all part of the biosphere that's true and it is alright. Earth has four major geological subsystems. I will teach you in this song. I hope you learn and listen. Here's one of many examples of how these spheres interact. There are so many different ways they help us live and that's a fact. When volcanoes erupt from the geos, Constellation, that's where I play. I'm the first Earth sized planet orbiting my host star. TOI 700, a red dwarf. We know this so far. I orbit my star in its habitable zone. Maybe there's a presence of liquid water on my surface shown. My star is 40% the mass of your sun and 55% of its temperature. These facts are so fun. I'm one of three exoplanets detected by test to be orbiting the host star TOI 700. We don't rest. Our names are TOI 700 B and C and TOI 700 D. You guessed it, that is me. All three exoplanets may be tidally locked. I do sing, which means the same faces towards the object. We are orbiting. I was discovered by test to see planets out of sight called the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Test was designed and launched specifically to find Earth sized planets orbiting nearby stars like me. Scientists confirmed the find called TOI 700D with NASA Spitzer Space Telescope independently. TOI is short for Transiting Exoplanet Survey. Satellite object of interest, it's so long to say. NASA's on the hunt for more Earth sized planets, but for now you have me. I'm sure there's more to find yet. You could become an astronomer, a job that's out of this world. You can be anything you want, whether you're a boy or a girl. My name is TOI 700 D. An exoplanet outside the solar system, I be. My name is TOI 700 D. 101.4 light years away from Earth. Let's learn about me. TOI 561B, one of the oldest rocky planets discovered, you'll see. TOI 
1B I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy T-O-I 56-1B Also known as Super Earth Soon you'll also agree I am T-O-I 56-1B My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity T-O-I 56-1B Was discovered in the year of 2020 By the Transmitting Exoplanet Survey Satellite Also known as TESS It sees things way out of sight T-O-I 56-1B Was discovered in the Milky Way Galaxy With an estimated age of 13 billion years the Milky Way galaxy is super old, I do agree My estimated age is 10 billion years That makes me one of the oldest rocky planets discovered with cheer I am around 280 light years away I'm a third bigger than the Earth, I do convey I get close when I orbit my G-type star It takes me 10.5 hours to orbit once because I'm not too far My mass is 1.59 of the Earth's That's one of the reasons I'm so unique for what that's worth Lauren Wise's team is researching me She's the team leader at the University of Hawaii it's unlikely any life can survive on me With a surface temperature of 3630 degrees That's roughly twice as hot as molten lava on Earth In Fahrenheit since my discovery and my birth I'm tidally locked to my G-type star in motion I have a permanent day side that's likely home to a magma ocean I am TOI 561B One of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see TOI 561B I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy TOI 561B Also known as Super Earth Soon you'll also agree I am TOI 561B My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity So that we can all thrive There are 
Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3. Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016 by Pan Stars. Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me even though it is extremely hard to say. I am very small compared to Earth's moon measuring 164 feet across. I'm tiny, it's true. I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory. Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye Like other asteroids do I'm a quirky satellite and this is true Because of this researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as NEO, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3. Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may change with new facts that we can avoid we are the earth and the moon and you will learn really soon you could fit the planets in our solar system between us this is true we are the earth and the moon we meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us we will explain to you with a smile the average distance between the Earth and the Moon is 382,500 kilometers. Here's the other seven planets fit between us explaining who they are with some cool features. I am Mercury, the first planet from the Sun. I'm the second hottest planet on my run. My average diameter we do know is 4,879 kilometers Add these up as they are shown I am Venus, the hottest planet And the second from the sun I have an average diameter of 12,104 kilometers in the solar system Hi, I am Mars, the fourth planet from the sun you should know I have an average diameter of 6,771 kilometers as I did show My name is Jupiter, the largest planet in from the sun I'm number 5 My average diameter is 139,822 kilometers as I thrive 
I'm the planet with the prominent rings. The sixth one called Saturn. My average diameter is 116,464 kilometers while I turn. I am Uranus. I am the seventh planet from the solar system's sun. I have an average diameter of 50,724 kilometers. I'm a frozen one. I am Neptune, the eighth and last planet in the solar system, as far as we know. I have an average diameter of 49,244 kilometers. I'm blue as shown. Our total planet diameter size when added up is 380,008 kilometers we share. We still have 2,492 kilometers of space to spare. We are the Earth and the Moon. And you will learn really soon. You could fit the planets in our solar system between us. This is true. We are the Earth and the Moon. We meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us we will explain to you with a smile earth has a second moon it's me provisionally designated 2016 h03 kamu is thought to be an asteroid but that may have changed with new facts that we can first spotted in April of 2016 by Pan Stars Asteroid Survey Telescope you now see this telescope is located on Haleakala in Hawaii which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered Orbiting the Earth In a weird way Kamu'u Alava Was the name they gave me Even though it is extremely Hard to say I am very small Compared to Earth's moon Measuring 164 feet across I'm tiny, it's true I circle the Earth in a repeating Corkscrew-like trajectory Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye. Like other asteroids do, I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of coal orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 H03. Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may surface 
whether it's day or night It's believed I was created 4.5 billion years ago When a Mars-sized body collided with Earth Their debris formed me real slow Meteors, asteroids, and comets Struck my surface for a billion years Due to the fact that they don't burn up In my thin atmosphere If you wonder what a moon is It's a natural satellite One that orbits a single planet The planet orbits a star so bright Scientific observations were first made in 1610 By Galileo Galilei, the astronomer Italian On the moon, Earth's natural satellite I rotate the same speed as the Earth And I'm a natural source of light On the moon, my appearance is gray and white See one half of my surface Whether it's day or night When the earth spins on its axis Ocean levels stay the same Then the moon's gravitational pull Creates the tides that we see change 238,900 miles from the earth Is the distance measured When the first spaceship landed on my turf The reason you see one half of my surface All the time is because my rotation's same speed as the earth taught in this rhyme it takes 27 earth days for me to rotate once around there is no air on my surface so you won't hear any sound on the moon earth's natural satellite i rotate the same speed as the earth and i'm a natural source of light on the moon my appearance is gray and white you only see one half of my surface whether it's day or night Did you know The place you call home Is a habitable place in space Called the Goldilocks Zone It's a place in space a certain distance from our star Where liquid water could be found Guess what? It's where you are The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable zone In an area around a star you know The zone is not too hot And it's not too cold For liquid water to exist so life can grow there is only one planet we know so far that is teeming with life, of course. That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze but if earth moved to the position of planet mercury the earth's water would quickly boil away there would be no more life you see the goldilocks zone is a habitable place where earth sits from the sun Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water's the source of life, that's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed So scientists would say This interstellar journey will show you The role gravity had played Almost five billion years ago There was only our 
our sun, which was a newborn star surrounded by dust was how it begun. Over time this dust began to slam into one another due to gravity pulling it in as it smashed into each other. The planet that we live on was made by space dust and rocks that formed Earth over millions of years into an orb, not a box. They say four and a half billion years ago Earth was a fireball. That's right with surface temperatures over 2,000 degrees and Fahrenheit. At this point there was no air, just carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor making it hot and toxic when the Earth began. Our boiling ball of liquid rock was slammed by a young planet. This planet's name was Thea. It was the size of Mars as you see it. The blast wave from this collision sent trillions of tons of debris, which over time was pulled back in to circle the Earth by gravity. This giant ring around the Earth was made of red hot dust and rock. Eventually formed our moon. We see today, I know it's a shock. Let's speed up millions of years to see how water formed. About 3.9 billion years ago, Earth was hit by a meteor storm. Inside each meteor, scientists think there were small crystals. Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells. Over the 20 million years that these meteors fell, pools of water started to form on the cooling crust. I do tell, no water on our earth is billions of years old now you see, and may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me. Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the earth covered in water with tiny islands peeking out while the core remain much hotter. This hot core pushes molten rock up and out new crust when the lava cools it forms the land we know as it builds and thrusts over time these land masses start to collide and eventually form our continents we know today do still transform here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played how did earth get its atmosphere we have today there are three basic atmospheric hypothesis still used to this day. The first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas. These molecules move so fast they escape Earth's gravity into space at last. The second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam and carbon dioxide, hydrogen, sulfate, ammonia, and methane science agreed. The third and current atmosphere is made up of this. You will see plants take in carbon dioxide and give up oxygen to you. Take in oxygen and give off CO2 Also volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels We burn too many fossil fuels and have too many factory farms All this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm It's up to us to change the way we consume and create energy If you start to make changes now our planet will change you will see Please do your part to save the earth to improve your future now we're capable of change, go make us all proud Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed So scientists would say this interstellar journey Will show you the role gravity had played You're so smart and important, so believe in what you can do Make a change and set the stage in Earth's future for you Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. The lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust. They're part of the geosphere on earth which makes these plates adjust. Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock. There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates. Divergent, convergent, and transform now aren't those names just great? Divergent boundaries move away from each other and produce rip valleys. Most active between oceanic plates, yes, the plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide. That's where you'd find those earthquakes and volcanoes do reside. Transform are two plates that slide past one another. The San Andreas Fault lends the best example of this to discover. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Let's look at this top 
topological map of the earth that we live on and the seven major tectonic plates we're learning in this song the biggest is the pacific plate it lies beneath the pacific ocean nicknamed the ring of fire due to all the volcanic emotion the north american plate is the next on the list of major plates it includes both continental and oceanic crust i indicate next we have the eurasian plate also a major tectonic grade two large continents it includes our europe and asia today let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates it's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes then the african plate is next it does straddle the vast equator most of africa's continents in it that's an easy way to locate her the antarctic plate is a medium size of the seven plates that are major it houses the continent of antarctica you'll hear as i banter the indo-australian plate is on the smaller side of the majors it's often to consider two plates but as one it's definitely much greater the south american plate is the smallest of the major plates you know that includes south america and atlantic ocean seabed below talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates it's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates it's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes earth has four major geological subsystems i will teach you in this song i hope you learn and listen geosphere atmosphere hydrosphere and biosphere are four major systems on earth that balance why we survive here these systems are all separate but interact with one another in so many different ways in each system you will discover let's start with geosphere all earth's material The solid iron in our core is a bit smaller than the moon. The nickel iron alloy on our core is liquid, it is true. The metal is a layer between the crust and on our core, mostly made of minerals and silicate rock. Let's learn some more. Which brings us to the crust in which we all play and live on, made up of rock and lots of elements that keep it real strong. Earth has four major geological subsystems. I will teach you in this song, I hope you learn and listen The atmosphere's the next sphere that we will look at It contains Earth's air and protects all of us, now how about that? The atmosphere's made up of five layers, now you know One layer blocks radiation from the sun, it's called the ozone Let's move on to the hydrosphere, it's a major one as well It includes all forms of Earth's water well oceans lakes and rivers and our water vapor too are what make up the hydrosphere you learn something new the biosphere is the final of the four major groups including anything that's living that also includes you microbes animals plants birds and insects alike are all part of the biosphere that's true and it is all right earth has four major Systems. I will teach you in this song, I hope you learn and listen Here's one of many examples of how these spheres interact There are so many different ways they help us live and that's a fact When volcanoes erupt from the geosphere It releases particles and ash into the atmosphere These particles act as the nuclei to help form water drops That's the hydrosphere at work and it never stops when the rain falls to the earth this is the hydrosphere which stimulates plants to grow which is the biosphere the plants create oxygen that's released to the atmosphere plants also feed animals and humans and that's biosphere there's so many more examples you can find on your own you can research them 
this sun Earth has four major geological subsystems I will teach you in this song I hope you learn and listen My name is TOI 700D, an exoplanet outside the solar system I be. My name is TOI 700D, 101.4 light years away from Earth, let's learn about me. I was discovered in January, in the year of 2020, by Emily Gilbert, while well, studying astronomy i'm an exoplanet 101.4 light years away from earth in the dorado constellation that's where i play i'm the first earth-sized planet orbiting my host star toi 700 a red dwarf we know this so far i orbit my star in its habitable zone maybe there's a presence of liquid water on my surface shown my star is 40% the mass of your sun and 55% of its temperature. These facts are so fun. I'm one of three exoplanets detected by tests to be orbiting the host star TOI 700. We don't rest. Our names are TOI 700 B and C and TOI 700 D. You guessed it, that is me. All three exoplanets may be tidally locked. I do sing, which means the same faces towards the object. We are orbiting. I was discovered by test to see planets out of sight called the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Test was designed and launched specifically to find Earth-sized planets orbiting nearby stars like me. Scientists confirmed the find called TOI 700D with NASA Spitzer Space Telescope independently. TOI is short for Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite Object of Interest. It's so long to say. NASA's on the hunt for more Earth-sized planets, but for now you have me. I'm sure there's more to find yet you could become an astronomer a job that's out of this world you can be anything you want whether you're a boy or a girl my name is toi 700 d an exoplanet outside the solar system i be my name is toi 700 101.4 light years away from earth let's learn about me I am TOI 561B, one of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see. TOI 561B, I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy. TOI 561B, also known as Super Earth, soon you'll also agree. I am TOI 561B. My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity. TOI 561B was discovered in the year of 2020 by the Transmitting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Also known as TESS, it sees things way out of sight. TOI 561B was discovered in the Milky Way galaxy with an estimated age of 13 billion years. The Milky Way galaxy is super old, I do agree. My estimated age is 10 billion years. That makes me one of the oldest rocky planets discovered with cheer. I am around 280 light years away. I'm a third bigger than the Earth, I do convey. I get close when I orbit my G-type star. It takes me 10.5 hours to orbit once because I'm not too far. My mass is 1.59 of the Earth's. That's one of the reasons I'm so unique for what that's worth. Lauren Wise's team is researching me. She's the team leader at the University of Hawaii. 
it's unlikely any life can survive on me With a surface temperature of 3630 degrees That's roughly twice as hot as molten lava on Earth In Fahrenheit since my discovery and my birth I'm tidally locked to my G-type star in motion I have a permanent day side that's likely home to a magma ocean I am TOI 561B One of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see TOI 561B I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy TOI 561B Also known as Super Earth Soon you'll also agree I am TOI 561B My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity